Well, still being on the hunt for actually what went wrong with this engine, uh, I have reassembled it to do a proper crank index check. Um, and I'm going to videotape it as we go through to show exactly how the procedure happens. So I went this morning and I got me a dial indicator set. This has uh, Harbor Freight. There you go, Harbor Freight. Um, 29 bucks. It's not bad. Now, it's not digital and it doesn't have a little button that you can self-center it back to zero, but you can move the little dial so that way you can zero it out. It has the clamp and the nifty little uh, holder. So, and then I went and I found this. This is a little um, two-scale degree wheel that I found online. It, it, uh, I've rebuilt some engines in the past and I'm a member of their forums and this guy, I remember this guy had posted this, which is kind of cool. It has, uh, basically it's had a degree of cam and uh, for a big V8 engine. And what I've done is I've marked the 120 degree increments that we'll see here in a second. And my lovely wife mounted it to a Coors Light um, little uh, cardboard. So what we're gonna do is that's gonna actually go on the front of the crank snout here. So that way we can actually measure. And then you see there, there's my little coat hanger. It actually will point to the certain spot. So what I'm, this is the best rebuild candidate I've had come through my garage in a long time. And I'm really stoked that this thing's not gonna be out of index. If it's not, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's just kind of frustrating. Um, we have that one that runs fine and it's in great shape, but I really need a second one. My wife loves to go riding with me and one, one of us takes one kid and the other takes the other. I really don't want to keep that 700 out there because I really don't like it. Um, I just like the Fuji motors better. Don't ask me. I guess I'm a glutton for punishment, but uh, that's got the domestic in it and it does not have the engine upgrade or the, uh, the ignition upgrades. So that's another thing I'm kind of worried about. But anyway, I know these Fuji motors, um, but uh, if this crank index checks out, I'm going to uh, tear it apart, split the cases, replace the seals and do this thing right. So here we go. Okay, so here's my setup. It comes with the uh, vice grips the little pipe that goes over to here, and my dial indicator. And uh, this wouldn't have worked anyway with the uh, heads on there because it got a hole in the piston. So hopefully this is the right way to do it. If it's wrong, you know, pipe in, tell me, but uh, it's about the best I can get. So anyway, I got the uh, debris wheel on here with my little pointer. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to, according to the uh, instructions, we want to zero out the, um, the crank. And that's it, top dead center. You want it to be right at zero, you see that? And then once it hits that zero mark, you wanna keep rotating it this way, which is counterclockwise from looking at the rear of the craft. So you're wanting to, and I'm quoting the book from here. So what we wanna do is come back a 10th of an inch after top dead center, which should be right there. Okay, so that's right there. Now we want to make sure our degree wheel is marked to 120. It's marking 120, all right? So now we want to do that again. Come back all the way around, make another revolution. Now one thing I've been noticing I've been having a problem with is that after I make a revolution, it's not coming up and giving me the exact same thing. Let's see if it does this time. Yep, see, this top dead center is about a thousandth of an inch different it seems to do that every damn time and i think it's this cheap dial indicator so what i keep doing is i'm just okay so that is our top dead center right there so we're going to readjust it and this is a really cheap dial indicator it doesn't have a little button that so we're going to go back come back up Okay, so we're gonna continue on to after dead center, top dead center, to basically 10. There we go. So now, we should be at 120 again. So we are, so now we can move on to our next step. And it says, after that, it says do not remove your pointer, keep it in the right thing. It says remove the dial indicator and install on cylinder number two. Repeat steps four and five, which is checking for uh, the after, uh, what do you call it, uh, 0 .100 after top dead center. And this will tell us if we're aligned. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna move it to the center one, recheck my, uh, my top dead center, and double check and see what it says. 
Okay, so I've got the uh, on the center adjusted and uh, I've got it to top dead center and we keep rotating it over to our 90 degree mark or I say 90 degree it's actually you know what is that ten thousands of an inch or a tenth of an inch but you're supposed to be 120 degrees from cylinder number one and I am it's like right on it so I marked number two there so I'm gonna redo all this just to make sure because uh, I want to make sure it's done right. Now, another thing I want to point out is that now we can check center's exact TDC. Make sure we are perfectly in line with top dead center. And then you can look down inside the cylinders and see what I'm looking at. You see that little exhaust port right there? You see how close the piston is to that on either side. And man, I tell you, they are dead nuts the same as far as the gap is concerned. So, I mean... Got a good feeling about this. <clears throat> so now we're going to move on to the PTO, do the same thing, see what our reading is. Okay, PTO cylinder is done. Uh, what I did is I moved it over. I went back and I, let's just go back and re recap. I got it to TDC. So come back and get it to TDC. Adjust your dial to measure zero and then go back. Make sure you're still hitting zero. If you got one of those nifty, nice ones, you'll be just fine. Okay, so now I'm hitting zero and then coming off of zero. That's exactly, it takes me a couple times to get it exactly where I want it, but, all right, so I'm gonna back off and then come back like the engine's hitting its stroke. And you notice it missed that time, there we go. Boom, and then we take it back to 90. And we go look at our front one. And voila, 120 degrees from the first one. So once again, when I first set it up, we're at this one. And number two was 120 degrees out. And number three is 120 degrees out from there. So pretty confident that this thing is uh, still in the index. Um, so that's kind of how you do it, uh, part of the uh, instructions here. And uh, I guess this is time to uh, start tearing it apart and. So it tells me that the being out of index wasn't the problem. So what it could be now is it could be an air leak in the seal up there. So what I'm going to do is I'll end up splitting the cases, cleaning it up, uh, putting new seals in it, resealing the case, and go from there. So, oh, much more work, but hey, it's winter time. Who cares? Okay, so we're going to recap uh, exactly what I went through for the steps, and we're going to do it exactly step by step this time. So. Everybody will get it. Now that I know that we're okay, uh, go through it line by line. In that way, if anybody has any questions, uh, this will help you. So first thing is I did on my, on my mag cylinder, I got it zeroed out. And you do that by getting your crank to exactly zero. And we're gonna get it to zero now. Double check. It takes a little bit of time with this piece of crap little dial indicator. I really should have got a digital one, but you know what? I'm cheap sometimes and that bites me in the ass. But anyway. All right, there's zero. So zero it out, zero, and then take it back down to 90, which is just basically that difference there and that takes us that shows that we're at 120 on this one that's our starter point notice I wrote number one there so I got number one so now we're gonna move this to the center cylinder and get it all set up again okay once again we've got the center now on zero top dead center you can also use this to double check and look down in there and see the distance from the top of the cylinder to the top of the the, the uh, jug here should be exact on both of these two on either side. And uh, I don't have a little, you know what, I'll run upstairs and get a little uh, measuring deal so we can uh, actually do that with down to the millimeter. Okay, found one I was looking for. This is just a little metal uh, ruler. It's got inches on one side and millimeters on the other. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to stick it down inside here and I'm going to remember how where it is. It is right at God, 
Golly, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm not very good at measuring stuff, but so it's just over. If you look at, let's just look at the number four, okay? Right there. So it's just past maybe, you know, three and I mean, just past it. So we come over here. Oh man, you can't get any more dead on than that. Check that out. I mean, okay, so, golly, it's hard just for you guys to see it. There's a shadow right there. I mean, I don't think there's any any question that this crank is an index. Because if you look, there's the four. It's right on, if you look, you see where the edge of the four is right there, where the little mark goes down and four across. You look where that is, that actually touches It actually touches the head. So if we go over here and do the same thing, it's dead on, exact, dead on. So yeah, I'm happy with that. But anyway, we'll continue doing what we're doing. So that's another way to check your uh, top dead center. Uh, the next one will be, now we're gonna move to our uh, PTO. Actually, we didn't even finish checking, so what we want to do is keep rotating around to our 90. Right there. And you want to go over here and look, and you see that I am right on number two, which is 120 degrees out. So now I'm going to put the camera down and move the dial indicator again. All right, so now we're just past top dead center on the PTO. And we look over here in our little degree wheel. I'm lined up to zero again, which is our 360 degree mark. So I'm happy. Um, I think that's pretty much a definitive that that's not the problem. So that leads us to believe it's possibly an air leak. Um, I can't find anything in the carburetors that have uh, indicated there's clogged passages at all. Uh, the only thing I have not done yet is take apart, where is the damn thing? The fuel pump. You know, fuel pump could have possibly died. Doubt it, but. You know, that's one thing to check into. But at least now we know that this is a good rebuildable engine. Put some new seals in it. Clean out the bottom end. Make sure everything's clean perfect. Move right along.